Butte from Authentic Sales. Today we're talking about what are the most important skills that are required in growing your business. Looking forward to seeing what comes out in today's episode and what takeaways you can take from these tips and tricks that Prosper and I are going to deliver. See you soon. We're back again with Adam Bude, our internationally published author, sales expert, and course creator. Adam, welcome back. Hey, Prosper. Thanks so much for having me back on the show. I'm pretty excited about what we're going to uncover today. Fantastic. Well, today we're talking about one of the major things that every entrepreneur needs, which is basically a skill set that, um, you know, guarantees their success. But the reason why we're talking, um, you know, with you today is because we've been doing a series of uh, these videos where we started off, um, you know, talking about, you know, um, the mindsets and then the growth habits that entrepreneurs need. Now, today we're, um, you know, uh, talking about the skill sets. And the reason we've brought you in is because not only are you a sales expert or a course creator, but you also help growth mindset and purpose driven business owners to actually scale their business by increasing their sales, their profits and systems and creating more time to work on their business instead of on it so that they have a sellable asset of real value. Now that requires a lot of skills and that requires, um, you know, a lot of attention to the business up until it's a sellable asset of real value. Yes. Now, obviously, Adam, in your experience as an entrepreneur, you've come across uh, the need to learn, um, you know, skills that are very important in order for you to create a business that's profitable and enjoyable. What would you think is the most important skill any entrepreneur should learn um, you know, if they want to create an asset that is of real value. Uh, well, there's two. The, the first skill I think is is your intrapersonal skills. Yeah, um, because if we cannot um, develop ourselves and grow ourselves and the skills that we have, we can't grow our business at all. It just won't grow. So that's what we were talking about last week. With you've got to have that growth mindset in order to grow your business. Um, and that couples on the back from the week before, which is about being leader, like the leadership skills, mindset, and now actual skills. So when we're looking at the actual skills that are involved in making more sales in our businesses, the first thing that comes up is rapport. Now, people think that they know what rapport is, but they have no idea what rapport is. Rapport is not about being nice to someone. You know, if, if, if you have a meeting uh, with a particular person and what they say about you is he's a nice guy, then you've done something wrong because it's not about being nice. A rapport is a subconscious connection with someone. So when you go into, a, um, let's say you go into someone's house, right? And this is a really good example. You walk into a house, you've been invited to a party. There's 50 people there. You might only know two or three. Yeah, so you're coming along for the first time and you look in one corner of the room and you see a group of people and for whatever reason, Prosper, you choose not to go down that that particular path. And then you look down the other direction and there's another group of people that you don't know, but for whatever reason, you're gravitating towards that corner of the room instead. And you move over to those people, you're standing on the outside, you're starting to listen a little bit to what's going on, but there's an energetical connection that makes you feel more comfortable than what it would do on the other side of the room. And that's why you're there. Human beings want to feel comfortable in any environment that they're in. And that's why that naturally happens. So what people don't understand is that we want to do business with people that we feel comfortable. That whole know me, like me, trust me thing. What that is, is a man-made words taking the rapport, that energetical rapport that we have. Well, you're just putting that into words. So I resonate with you, okay? From the minute that we first spoke, we had, I felt, an instant rapport. There was a connection there. And, and because of that connection, the trust was already, I didn't have to know you like you trust you. The trust was already there. So when we understand what rapport is and we understand how to create rapport, then what that does is it opens up the possibilities of a lot more communication with the other people and that's and that's where we need to get to 
Absolutely. And I really appreciate you bringing, you know, this uh, skill set in and of itself, because everything that we do involves having to deal with another person, um, whether it's communication, whether it's talking to our clients, our vendors, um, you know, our suppliers and things of that nature. Now, while that is all in play, if we are doing things on a digital platform where we don't necessarily have to see people face to face, how can somebody maybe build rapport with some sort of an audience or with the people that is going to be demanding money off of? It's how you show up on a regular occurrence that will determine that level of rapport that the other person has with you. So the, the reason that I have this whole authenticity thing about me and being authentic is that what you see is what you get there's no frills there's no show there's no there's this is what this is me right now you'll either like that or you won't like that right from the beginning and either is fine okay but if you do like that then you're going to come back for more now human beings judge right and um we sort of touched on that i think last week too what they're judging for is the consistency in your behavior so if you keep showing up the same way then that rapport becomes deeper. They actually feel like they know you. And on this whole social media world, people think they know people because of what's been posted. But if they do one thing and then they show up in a completely different way on that next post, then they've lost that connection straight away. So it's imperative that who you are is displayed all the time, warts and all. I love that saying, warts and all, just be you and let people connect with you so that you can start to build that rapport out. Absolutely. And one other skill set that we sort of, um, you know, touched upon earlier on was one of curiosity. And I have great respect that a lot of entrepreneurs are usually tasked to discover new problems and reveal maybe potential niche opportunities and maybe refactor whatever their original business process was so that they can innovate. How important is it for an entrepreneur to develop the skill set of being curious? That's such a good question. So what, what is curiosity to begin with? I think if we peel that back, Curiosity, in my mind, is giving me the opportunity to explore something different and explore something new um, because it's unfamiliar. So if you're someone that's not growth mindset, you're going to be that person that's stuck within your comfort zone that is doing Groundhog Day every day. If you are someone that is of growth mindset, you must have that level of curiosity because you're wanting to continually look for more opportunities to grow. And that opportunities can be yourself, it can be product lines, it can be anything at all to do with the business. You have to have the curiosity within your business, you have to have the curiosity within your services, within your products, within your systems, if you if you if you don't have a level of curiosity then you know you're not moving forward absolutely but you know what then happens is the you know curiosity actually killed the cat so the more curious you become the more sort of problems you unearth isn't it better to just sort of um stay put and just worry about what's coming you know your way than trying to be um you know solving all these problems uh, that come our way well it depends who came up with the phrase curiosity killed the cat <laughs> so <laughs> if, if if that was if that was made up by someone that doesn't want to learn anything so be it but but what i know is that every single thing that we want in our life is inside of our comfort zone right but at one point in our life that was on the other side of our comfort zone and if we didn't have the curiosity to go and get it it wouldn't be in our comfort zone anymore so i don't believe that curiosity killed the cat i believe curiosity creates opportunity absolutely and the more opportunity that we have, the more um, ways we can be able to serve our clients, which is how we can then create an asset that is of real value. Now, 
the goal yeah. of every entrepreneur is to maybe uh, be able to solve problems that we might be able to come across. How important is, um, you know, having that skill set of being able to um, innovate and solve problems that um, come our way? Well, I think it's it's vitally important. You know, we, we need to be able to think on our feet. We need to look for opportunities that may not necessarily be there. And when we find those opportunities that weren't there before, we need to have a critical level of thinking to be able to solve that problem. Ultimately, we only get paid for solving people's problems. So um, if we can't get our problem solving right, then we can't help our end clients, which means we will not be making any sales. We will not be making any money. Fantastic. Now, Adam, from being curious to trying to schmooze up with people, building rapport and things of that nature and trying to solve all the problems, um, you know, that are coming our way, where does somebody get all that time to, you know, get it all right and things of that nature? Oh, that is a question. When do you have the time to get it right? Do you know what? I think, um, and as I shared last time too, you know, fail your way to success. As long as you're being, as long as you're being vulnerable in the moment and you're prepared to have a go, um, the, the timing is always there. So we all have the same amount of time in the day. There's 24 hours in a day. It doesn't matter whether you're a billionaire or if you're on government subsidies, right? We all have the same amount of time. The difference between the billionaire and the person that's on government subsidies is that the billionaire chooses to use his time more strategically, whereas the ones that aren't don't. So in that time that he's choosing to use strategically, he understands or she understands that part of that job is to be communicating with people. Part of that job is to develop products. Part of that job is to be you know, increasing and improving our systems. Part of that job is to be everything else. It is what it is. So um, if we are allocating X amount of time of the day, whether that's five hours, three hours, 10 hours, and we're getting really strategic on how we're utilizing that time, the opportunities that come, we will be able to quickly make a decision as well because we're not here to procrastinate over stuff. We, we see something, we understand it, we can act on it, and then it's done. So those that can do that will get far more done throughout the day than those that will see an opportunity think, oh gosh, now I've got to go and do that. How much time is that going to take me to do? Uh, I'll get to that later. And they just put it to the side and they don't achieve the result. One of the things I learned a long time ago is that if you want to get something done, give it to the busiest person in the organization because that person is on the go. They're moving, right? They'll get it done. They know that there's a time frame it needs to be done by and they'll always deliver. So these are the people that are at the top of their game. And it doesn't matter with the, whether that's a sporting analogy or a business analogy. It's all, it's all the same. But those that put it to the side will never get there. They will never have enough time. They will never be able to answer the questions properly. They're just not that type of person that's going to be able to effectively get the jobs done. Fantastic. Oh, absolutely. Um, and, and, and I think time management is just one crucial skill that everybody has to learn, even as kids, you know, you, you, you learn to manage your time um, effectively so that you get more done. Now, this is something that obviously is happening and is um, going to be affecting a lot of businesses moving forward. And I think it is a skill set of um, resilience where, you know, you're going to be handling rejections, stress, burnout, maybe a lack of fo focus, and maybe you might be noticing uh, slow progress because we've just come out of a pandemic. Now we're going into a recession. How important is it when somebody is looking to buy, to sell, uh, to create a sellable asset of real value that they're resilient and they can actually create that skill set of weathering through all the economic downturns and all the storms that might come their way? Uh, well, what we're talking about now is mental toughness. Um, that resilience that you talk about comes from within. 
And, and that actually comes from constantly upskilling your mind. So for me, it's personal development every day. Um, I'm constantly tapping into a new book. I'm constantly tapping into a new program. I'm constantly feeding my mind with whatever, whether it be meditation, whether it be gratitude, whether it be any of that sort of stuff so that I can really feed my mind to help me keep moving forward. If we're focusing on the problems that are occurring, which is what most people do, all we're going to do is create more problems that are going to occur. But if we're focusing on provide on, on solutions to the problems, then it's done and dusted and we're looking for the next thing to solve. So we're, move, so we're moving forward with it. The, the recession, I believe, is going to come. Uh, we spoke about that before. That's my personal feeling. It, it has to. Um, but I'm not an economist, so what would I know? <laughs> um, but uh, what I do know is um, regardless of a pandemic, regardless of a recession, regardless of a depression, if we don't have the ability to constantly upskill our mind, constantly upskill our skills and constantly upskill our operations, then when the poo hits the fan, we're the first ones that are caught out every time. So that whole upskilling thing is more than just learning how to overcome objections and close sales. I mean, that's that's what all other sales trainers will teach you. But it's it's far it's far greater than that because that skill set to be able to have that mental toughness is one thing. That skill set to learn how to communicate is another thing. That skill set to learn how to coach and train is another thing again. So we must be constantly improving. I mean, Tony Robbins talks about Carney, C A N I. Have you heard that phrase? Constant and never and ending improvement. Improvement. Yeah. Yeah. So. We, we must be every day looking to improve just 1%. Like if we just get one new thing each day that we can add to our toolbox, then that helps us with that mental toughness that you're talking about to withstand, you know, different times that we might be faced with. Absolutely. Now, obviously, Adam, you know, in a sea of uh, business people out there, somebody's just probably sitting there watching this video, nodding their head and saying, nah, it ain't all that. Um, what would be the one thing that you can advise people that are not upgrading their skills, um, you know, you know, as, as a business owner and, um, you know, what should they actually do be doing right now? Um, well, if they're, if they are like that, the, the easiest way to know that someone is not upgrading their skills is to look at what their P and L's are over the last five years. <laughs> what's your growth in your business? What did you grow last year? What did you grow the year before? What did you grow the year before? And what you will find is that most of those people will be very even keel. If anything, they're going backwards because everything else is moving forwards and they're not actually moving with the times. Uh, I mean, to me, We've we've spoken about this too, Prosper. It's 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 no surprise to me why ninety five percent of small businesses are out of business in five years. Ninety five percent. So if I'm sitting in a room and I'm in a networking event, I know that nine and a half out of ten of these people will not be in their business in five years' time. Wow, fantastic! Well, if somebody has taken heed to that. Uh you know, statement of not being a statistic, somebody who's not going to be in business in the next five years. Uh, what's the best way that people can get a hold of you there, Adam? Uh, you can make a time on calendar. There's a little QR code there on um, behind me. Definitely, you can jump me, uh, you can find me on LinkedIn. Um, my website is the Authentic Sales Training Academy.com. Uh, it's a bit of a mouthful, but you can connect with me on any of those platforms. Absolutely. And we'll be putting the details in the show notes there so that people can get a hold of you. Now, obviously, from now on, this is, um, you know, episode three out of five, where we're talking about skill set. And then the next one that we're going to be talking about is about generating leads so that you can now grow that business into an actual sellable asset 
of real value. Adam, I can't thank you enough for the time that you've taken today, uh, expanding our skill set and also helping us with our growth mindset, um, especially because we're pur purpose driven business owners that want to scale their businesses. Thank you so much for your time today. Thanks, Prosper. It's always fun hanging out with you and sharing, uh, sharing some knowledge. Absolutely. Thank you.